Good morning, class. Today we are starting Chapter 5 in your Go Math textbook. Hopefully you have already torn out and cut out your vocabulary cards at the beginning of the chapter and put them in a Ziploc bag to keep in a very safe place so you can find them when you need them. Today's lesson, you're going to need pages 261 and 263. If you don't have them torn out already, please pause the video and go grab those pages. Today's lesson is called Describing Patterns. Okay, we're going to be talking about patterns using multiplication strategies. So, the essential question is, what are some ways you can describe a pattern in a table? Right. The outdoor club is planning a camping trip. Each camper will need a flashlight. One flashlight uses four batteries. How many batteries are needed for eight flashlights? Okay, so we're gonna have a table to help us solve and figure out this problem. Okay, a lot of times um, a table can be very helpful if you're not sure what multiplication problem to do. So we have flashlights and we have batteries. Don't get confused by all the numbers that are here, okay? So just look at, get something to block this for you. I only want you to look at the row that says flashlights. All right, so you see that? So this is for one flashlight, two flashlights, three flashlights, four flashlights, all the way up to the eight flashlights, okay? And it's just counting by one because we're going up one flashlight each time, okay? All right, then underneath that, you have batteries, okay? So now when I show you the batteries, I'm gonna block it like this because I want you to remember from our problem it says one flashlight uses four batteries so here on the table flashlights one flashlight uses four batteries okay so then it shows us if one flashlight uses four batteries then two flashlights use eight batteries notice we doubled the top number so we also doubled the bottom number. And then that also means that three flashlights use 12 batteries. Now we've tripled it. So instead of one uses four, okay, three flashlights, three times four is 12. Okay, so now let's look at the table as a whole. On the row of flashlights, they're counting by ones because the flashlights are increasing in count by one. The batteries, however, need to count by fours because for each one flashlight, you need four batteries. So every time you add on another flashlight, you have to add on four more batteries. Okay? All right. So look at the or look for a pattern to complete the table. As you look across the rows, you can see the number of batteries increases by four for each flash flashlight. So for every flashlight, we add four batteries. Step two, use the pattern to find the number of batteries in eight flashlights. So here's eight. So I'm going to add four to 28. You might say, why? Well, because the pattern on batteries is to add four for each additional flashlight. So I'm going to add four each time. So each of these was plus four each time, right? Every time. So because that's the pattern, it's not going to change. So here I can say 28 plus four, okay? And 28 plus four is 32. So 32 f batteries are needed for eight flashlights. 
Okay, that's if you use the addition um, pattern. Now, if you use the multiplication pattern, look down here. Look for a pattern by comparing the columns, remember columns go up and down, in the table. You can multiply the number of flashlights by four to find the number of batteries that are needed. Okay, so this is the other pattern. Multiply the number of flashlights by four. The first pattern was for every flashlight, add four. So multiply the number of flashlights by four to find the number of batteries that are needed. So if I go up here, I'm wanting to find for eight. So I'm going to take the number of flashlights, which is eight, multiply it by four because each flashlight needs four batteries. And I know that my answer, because I've already done the addition one, is 32. So the two patterns that you'll be looking for are either an addition pattern or a multiplication pattern. You can use whichever you are more comfortable with. There's no right or wrong, okay? And every table might be different. On some tables, it might be easier to use multiplication pattern. On others, it might be easier to use repeated addition. All right, flip your page over. Describe a pattern, then complete the table. The campers need five packs of batteries. Okay. If there are eight batteries in each pack, how many batteries will be in five packs? Okay. So we have two columns here to our table. Packs of batteries, we start at one and we end at five because we're wanting to find out um, how many will be in five packs. Then we have the number of batteries. So for one pack of batteries, there's eight in there, okay? And then if you have two packs, you have 16 batteries, all right? So there's two, like I said, there's gonna be two patterns. We can use addition or we can use multiplication. So if we describe this pattern, we know that we need to add eight batteries for each pack because there's eight batteries in each pack. Okay, so every time I add on another pack, I'm gonna add on eight. So plus eight, plus eight, plus eight, plus eight. Okay, so every time you add on another pack of batteries, you need to add on eight individual batteries. So that's the addition um, pattern. You can use the multiplication pattern so you would say, well, you multiply the number of packs by eight, because there's eight in each. So I can multiply the number of packs by eight to get how many batteries, or I can add eight batteries each time. So now let's finish our table. We know our three, so what if we use our multiplication pattern for this one? Three times eight because multiply the number of packs by eight. Three times eight is 24. Now let's use the addition one just to switch it up. 32 plus eight is 40. So there will be 40 batteries in five packs, okay? All right, so look down at the share and show. How can you describe a pattern to find the cost of four packs of batteries? Okay. So here we go. You have packs of batteries, one, two, three, and four packs. So I always want to look at the smallest one to help me get an idea of the base. So I know one pack of batteries costs how much? $3. So if one pack of batteries costs $3, I wanna find out how many four packs cost. So if each one costs $3, there are two ways we can do this. You only have to pick one, but I'm gonna write both down so that you can learn both of them, okay? Okay. 
So I could add three dollars for each pack. Okay, so that would be I'd add three dollars every time they added a pack of batteries. Um, or switch colors. Or I could multiply the number of packs by three. Okay, so this is your other choice. You could multiply the number of packs by $3 because they each cost $3. These are the only two ways to describe this pattern, okay? You should not be saying, oh, I can skip count by three. That's not describing our pattern in the table because we're not necessarily just skip counting. We need to include the other row or the other column, however it's set up. So packs of batteries, each cost three dollars so i know in order to solve i need to add three dollars for each pack that's added on or i need to multiply the number of packs by three dollars so if i look at this four and i follow my multiplication uh, pattern four times three is twelve and that finishes my table but when you are asked on your assignment on your test to describe the pattern these are your two choices Add three dollars for each whatever it is or multiply the number of whatever it is by how much one has okay so it's either add or multiply it's not repeated addition it's not skip counting these are the two ways to describe the pattern all right let's keep going Describe a pattern in the table, then complete the table. Here we go. So we have tents and we have lanterns. Okay, like I said before, you want to look at the smallest amount to try and start to figure out your pattern, okay? So if two tents have four lanterns, okay, well, can you tell me how many would one tent have? If I had one tent, how many lanterns would one tent have if a two tents has four lanterns? Two, good. So if two tents have four lanterns, then one tent is going to have two lanterns. Okay, the reason that I figured that out is because finding out the amount for one object is going to help the most with figuring out your pattern. Now you could figure out your pattern by looking at the lowest number here, two and four, but it'll be much easier if you solve it for one. So I know for my addition pattern, because one tent has two lanterns, so each lantern has two. So now I can look and see that this is four, six, eight, ten. Each has two, okay? So I know I can add two lanterns for each tent this is option number one add two lanterns for each tent notice i'm not just saying add two for each for each tent or just add two add what add two what add two lanterns remember we've talked about this a million times the labeling is super important be very clear add two lanterns because if you just said add two for each tent someone might come in and add two onto here or they might say oh six plus two is eight seven plus two is nine they may not understand what you mean you have to be very clear add two lanterns for each tent now let's talk about how we can describe the multiplication pattern Okay, well, we're multiplying by this number, so I can start it off by multiply the number of tenths 
by, okay, go back up to the one. What would I have to multiply times this one to get two? Two, good, okay, what about two? What would I have to multiply times two to get four? Two, so in order to finish this pattern, I need to multiply the number of tenths by two. So these are the two ways to describe this pattern. Add two lanterns for each tent or multiply the number of tenths by two, okay? Now we know our twos, so let's multiply. So that means six times two is 12 and seven times two is 14. So if we went to cross, we were multiplying times two. See, times two, times two, times two, all the way down. If we were adding, we were going down here and saying plus two, plus two, plus two, plus two, plus two. Okay, you see the different patterns? These are the two patterns. Multiply by two or go down and add by two. All right, let's do another one. Here we have adults and we have campers, okay? So they start off with the lowest number one, which is great because then we don't have to figure it out. So for one adult, they can supervise six camp campers, right? So for each adult, there's six campers. Okay, so that means six is going to be in our pattern. Let's do our addition first. So if I was just to go across, each time I'd add an adult on, I would be able to add six campers because each adult means six campers. So I would add six campers for each adult. So that means every time you get another adult, you can add six more campers on. Now, the other way I can do it is I can multiply the number of adults by, we're counting by six, so it would be six. And to check that, you would say one times six is six, two times six is 12, three times six is 18. That's how you would check that. Now we haven't memorized our sixes yet, so let's do the addition one this time. We're gonna add six campers each time. So six plus six is 12, 12 plus six is 18, 18 plus six is 24, and 24 plus six is 30. There you go. Okay, let's keep going. Lots and lots of practice. Grab page 263. All right, we have hours and the miles hiked. We have the lowest number already here. So in one hour, they hiked two miles. All right, so that means for one hour, you get two miles, okay? So let's write our addition pattern first, okay? And if I was to do the addition pattern, I would go across and I would be adding two miles for each hour. So I would add two miles for each hour. Okay, two plus two is four, four plus two is six, and so forth. Okay, if I was doing the multiplication pattern, I would say that I'm going to multiply the number of hours by two. So for this one, it'd be one times two is two, two times two is four, three times two is six, four times two is eight, and five times two is 10. Whichever pattern you choose to use, to help you solve this, it doesn't matter. You'll have the same answer, okay? You just need to make sure you understand how to describe the patterns. Number five, K 
cabins and campers. All right, so for three cabins, I have 27 campers. Okay, so if I have three cabins, I have 27 campers. Let's draw a picture. Here's our three cabins. And let's put the 27 campers in there evenly so that we can figure out how many campers are in one cabin. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. So there's my 27 campers in the three cabins. And if I look, each cabin has nine. So that means one cabin has nine campers. Okay, remember I said if you can find the smallest amount, it's going to help you with figuring out the pattern. You also could have asked yourself three times what equals 27. But if that was too difficult, drawing a picture is a great option. All right, let's look at what, of our, what our addition uh, pattern could be. So if one cabin has nine, that means we're going to be adding nine for each cabin, right? Yes. So we would add nine campers for each cabin because that's how many each cabin holds. Okay. So 45 plus nine is 54. 54 plus nine is 63. If I was multiplying, then I would say I, I'm going to multiply the number of cabins by nine, because there's nine in each. Each is your um, clue word for our multiplication. Okay. <clears throat> I want you to pause the video and go try and do six and seven before you come back, and then press play when you are finished with six and seven. All right, if you're back, that means you're ready to check your work on number six and seven. So look at number six, we have cabins and beds. So they've already got the smallest amount here, which is one cabin. And how many beds are in one cabin? Five, so that means we're probably going to be adding five and multiplying by five. Okay, so let's look at our addition um, pattern. So for each cabin, we're going to add five beds. So add five beds for each cabin. Okay. And then for multiplying, Okay, since one has five, or you could say in each cabin there's five, and each is our multiplication clue word, that means I'm going to multiply the number of cabins by five. If you wrote down skip count by fives, I want you to erase that and pay closer attention because skip counting and repeated addition are not the patterns we're looking for here. We're looking for adding patterns and multiplying. Okay, so we said we would multiply the number of cabins by five. Okay, we know how to multiply by five, so let's do it. And I'm going to do the ones they already did just to check it. One times five is five. Two times five is ten. Three times five is fifteen. Four times five is twenty. 5 times 5 is 25, and 6 times 5 is 30. All right, number 7. We have adults and students. So for every 2 adults, there's 12 students. What about every 1 adult? 
There's one adult. Well, one is half of two. What's half of 12? Six. So that tells me for every one adult, there's six students. It's important to find this out because that's going to help us with our pattern. Okay. So I know that for each adult, I'm going to add six students. So I'm going to add six students for each adult. Okay, so um, 18 plus 6 is 24, 30 plus 6 is 36, 36 plus 6 is 42. I went ahead and added those because we have not memorized our 6s yet. But if I was going to talk about the multiplication property, property, so 1 times what equals 6? Well, 1 times 6 equals 6. So I'm going to multiply the number of adults... by 6. Okay, 1 times 6 is 6, 2 times 6 is 12, 3 times 6 is 18, and so on. Okay. All right, look down here at the bottom. Students made a craft project at camp. They used two small pine cone patterns and one large pine cone pattern. Complete the table to find how many patterns were used for the different number of projects. So you can go ahead and finish the number of projects because that's just going to count up by one. So I have one project, two projects, three projects, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. If you need more time to write those down, then pause. Okay. Yeah, there's two more rows, but if you look at them, while you're trying to solve for one, you're going to confuse yourself. So let's just solve for this. So I know with one project, I need two of the small patterns. So that means I'm going to be multiplying by two or adding by two, either way you wanna do it. So two times two is four, three times two is six, four times two is eight, five times two is 10, 6 times 2 is 12, 7 times 2 is 14, 8 times 2 is 16, 9 times 2 is 18, and 10 times 2 is 20. Boom, and that row is done. Okay, so now I'm going to look at this bottom row, and this is where you might get confused. We need to ignore the middle row because we want to know for each project, how many large patterns do we need? Well, for one project, I need one large pattern. So all I'm going to be doing is adding one or, or multiplying by one. So two times one is two. Three times one is three. Four times one is four. Five times one is five. Six times one is six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay? So... If you have something that has multiple rows like this, remember you're going back to the main row, which is the projects. So when we're solving for the large pattern, we just ignore the one in the middle. Okay? All right, two more problems. Isaac uses four red beads and three blue beads to make a belt. How many beads will Isaac use to make four belts? Okay. Well, how many beads does Isaac use to make one belt? Do you know what that is? Four red beads and three blue beads. And is your clue word for adding. So first step is four plus three. That's how many I need for one belt. Then I need to multiply it times four because I want to know how many I need for four belts. Now I've written it out like the associated property. However, you don't have to write it out this way. You could do it in two totally different steps. You could do four plus three by itself and then multiply times four. So four plus three is going to tell me how many 
I need for one belt. Well, I need seven beads for one belt, but I want to make four belts. So I need to solve for seven times four. You have memorized your fours, so hopefully you remember that seven times four is 28. 28 what? How many beads? So 28 beads. Always label. Okay? Try to solve number 10. Pause the video. Come back when you're done. All right, if you're back, you're ready to check your work. Cora uses five yellow tiles and what's and a clue word for? Addition. Four green tiles to make a design. How many tiles will he need to repeat the design five times? This is the same exact kind of problem. Step one, I need to figure out how many tiles to make one design. Well, it's five plus four. What's that? Nine. So I need nine tiles to make one design. But I want to make five designs. What do I do? Nine tiles. I want to make five designs. Nine times five. Okay. We've learned our fives. You also have a nines trick. So you should already know that nine times five is 45, but 45 what? How many tiles? 45 tiles to make five designs. All right. Head on over to Think Central and have fun describing patterns and tables.